Hello, I'm John Cabrera for MobiTherm Advanced Thermography Solutions, and today I'm going to be demonstrating our lock-in solution for IR non-destructive testing. So with lock-in, we have some advantages over transient, another of our methods, uh, for measuring panels such as this, where you have a sandwich of honeycomb in the center, which is a very fast conductor, and composite overlays on the outside where you have more of an insulating effect. The lock-in method is a little trickier to set up, but it produces much sharper results when it works. In this particular sample, we've got all kinds of occlusions, delaminations, impact defects. Um, all of those can be detected with the lock-in method. Uh, it's a method that uses what's called a lock-in amplifier and there's a whole bunch of math behind this but essentially the basics of it is you introduce a signal of a fixed frequency in this case our signal is our halogen lamp and that signal is a sinusoidal wave so it moves up into intensity and then down in intensity and we repeat the signal over and over introducing the heat with that frequency component into the part and then the camera watches that same uh, component of heat come out of the part. And now in order to do that you need a very sensitive camera so we're using a cooled camera now. We're using a FLIR 6700 and it is a cooled camera with much greater sensitivity than an uncooled microbolometer and so it's able to see very minute changes in the phase of the part as the heat is coming in and out. And this is important because the delaminations, the uh, other defects that are in the part, what they do is they speed up and slow down the absorption and transmission of heat through the part. And once we use the fast Fourier transforms of the lock-in amplifier to remove our frequency component, that is everything that matches what our light is doing, when we subtract that, what is left is those things that caused aberrations. They, they caused uh, something to stay out of phase from our signal. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those type of defects. So I'm going to set up the workspace uh, using the wizard. So today we're going to select lock-in. There's other choices, but this is what we're going with today. Lock-in. We're going to select the excitation source to be our halogen lamp dimmer. The uh, modulation is going to be sinusoidal. When measuring other things like solar panels or uh, integrated circuits, which are both uh, things that we can inspect with lock-in, we would choose the rectangular or a rectangle or square wave excitation, uh, but for this lamp, because it is a very slow reacting element in there, we're gonna choose sinusoidal. And that way we'll get a nice smooth curve up and down. And we're gonna let the camera run in free run. Okay, so now our workspace is set up. The camera's connected. I need to change one thing here, and that is we want to set up the number of periods. That is, how many times are we going to turn the light on and off? And I'm going to say that's going to be four. And then the duration of that period is going to be five seconds. So it's going to be five seconds of on and off. Now it's telling me that it's going to take 601 images, so this is going to be a stack of images, of thermal images showing the heat up and cool down. And what we'll do is pixel by pixel we'll drill down. If you drill down through that, what you should see is a graph, a sinusoidal graph representing exactly what we input with the lamp. And in those pixels where you have defects, what you'll see is that that graph is phase shifted, so it's not in line with the excitation signal indicating that there might be a defect there. And once we have the resulting image, I'll show you what that looks like. So the entire measurement will take 20 seconds, 5 seconds on, 5 seconds off type of thing. And one advantage that this has over transient is that motion in the background is not as uh, detrimental to the results unless that motion happens to be in sync with our frequency. That is, if somebody is dancing to these lights, then we would have a problem. But otherwise, all of the background uh, noise is eliminated. 
So we have our first result here. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit by moving the, the contrast sliders. And then I'm going to turn on the EQ. And there we can see that we have a defect up in the upper right. It's fairly large. And that is most likely missing adhesive on the part. I can't see anything from the side, so I'm assuming that it's going to be missing adhesive. But the reason it's showing there is because when there's adhesive mi missing, you don't have a direct bond between the aluminum and the composite. And so that heat that's hitting there isn't traveling in at the same rate and coming back out. So once we throw away all of the other frequency components, that's what we're left with is our defect. So that's lock-in in a nutshell. If you have any questions or if you have a specific need that we can help you uh, address, please contact FLIR or Movitherm and uh, let us know how we can help. Thanks for watching.